Hello everybody, hello to everybody on Instagram. It's lovely to see you all this evening. Hello to everybody on um, Facebook. Hopefully I am now where I'm meant to be and I am live. If you can see me live, just like give me a thumbs up or comment or a heart so that I can see that you're with me. Hiya Chloe, how are you? Um, I can see you on Instagram. Can't see anybody on Facebook yet. Is everybody on Facebook? Just write something on the Facebook notes so I can see that you're here. Hi Emily on Instagram. Um, yeah, so I think I think we're okay. I think everybody's up and running. I think we've got it all working properly as it should be. Um, this is a really really quick live, okay? Hi Vicky. Um, thank you for that. Um, we're basically gonna have a really quick chat, okay, about working dogs that don't work because a lot of people think. They see the group when they say the ladies working dog group and they think, oh, this sounds all very amazing. But my dog needs to be working. But the reality of it is, I would say nearly 50% of our members on our last like poll don't ever have um, a plans to take their dogs out working. So that means they won't go into a shoot, they're never going to go hunting, they're never going to go tracking, they're never going to do anything like that. And that's absolutely fine. Because what I wanted to talk to you about is debunking some of the myths around a working dog. We see you all the time. Working dog has got to have a job. And yes, I do believe a, dog, a working dog has got to have a job, but that doesn't mean it has to be a paid job on a shoot. And that doesn't mean that it has to do things that are seen as a professional level, if that makes sense. If you agree with me or you, you understand the things I'm talking about, like give me some hearts, give me some likes so I can see you guys. Um, and I see loads of these stories. I have people who say, oh, I've got a, a, a cockapoo, so like a really obvious version of this. This is a cock spaniel and a poodle. Um, I can't join your group. Well, yes, you can because your dog is made up of two working dog breeds. Or people will say to me, well, I've got a collie. Can I come and do gun dog training with them? Well, yes, you can because there's loads of stuff that we do in gun dog training that is what every other dog needs to do. So, for example, all dogs need to learn to sit. All dogs need to learn to stay. All dogs need to learn to recall. So there's loads of stuff that we cover that any dog needs to do. And there's loads of stuff that we cover that maybe dogs who don't normally do them would still love and enjoy doing them. Does that make sense? Like dogs love to search and find, or quite a lot of dogs, a lot of active breeds really, really enjoy that type of stuff. Dogs that need mental stimulation. So the traits and the unique characteristics of dog breeds, of, what, of working dog breeds, are what makes them come under that banner of working dog. But they are working dogs through history, if that makes sense. So if you look at where they've come from, they came from places where they actually physically did a job every single day. And but if you look at our dogs now who like sofa surf, they literally go out and they might go out and do a work on a Saturday and a Tuesday, you know, but all of the other times of the week, they might be like just being a pet or being a pet that you love to train. And that's absolutely fine. And there are some benefits of dogs of not being working dogs like for a traditional working dog if we look for something like um a police dog police dog goes to work every single day certain types of police dogs certain types of army dogs they live a very planned very regimented life because they need to and then when they have to come back into civilian life it can be difficult for some of them to make that transition back so if you've got a working dog that's not working but you're still taking care of the characteristics and breed needs it's absolutely fine. Like, give me some like like hands up if you think, oh my god, I'm letting my working dog down because I'm you know I'm not out on shoot or I'm not using them for tracking or they're not herding cattle. You know, we think these things all the time, don't we? We think, oh my god, I'm letting them down. I feel really guilty about this. But the reality of it is, as long as you're doing things that incorporate some of their uh, genetic needs, they are absolutely happy. So I'll give you an example of this. My two dog, working dogs, Ella's five, Rex is six. Ella's been with me all her life. Rex has been with me for nearly two years now. Rex, up until he came to live with me, was probably working a couple of days a week. He doesn't do that now. I spend loads of time working on the ladies' working dog group. You know, I go out and train lords. In fact, these two haven't been out on a shoot and not working dogs all this season all our season for two years when after dad passed i couldn't even look at a shoot i tried i went out i took buddy out i took rex out um a buddy out and i out and i just my heart wasn't in anymore my dad wasn't with me so i didn't want to do it do i feel any more or any less of a working dog owner not at all because they're out training they're out looking for dummies they're out doing all the things that a working dog does and enjoying it 
without me needing to have them out doing a physically paid job. Does that make sense to everyone, yeah? Um, do you think the same applies to dogs from working lines? As in, yes, the breed is considered a working breed, but do it different to the parents who are working. Like, okay, so for example, I think I know what you mean there. Like, for, let's say, show cocker and working cocker. Please tell me if I'm offline with this. So show cocker and working cocker. A show cocker will not have the same... Um, level i don't believe from what i've seen of need to work as a working cocker and we saw quite a lot of this during covid where a lot of working breeds ended up in pet homes and pet owners were absolutely at a loss they thought they were going to have a dog like went out for lovely walks with them down the beach you know up the mountain whatever and would like come home and sit down and chill out and then suddenly they had the equivalent of a tasmanian devil never settled didn't want to didn't want to stop didn't want to switch off and they were absolutely uh, lost lost his word overwhelmed from a word from from the webinar that we did last week or, or wednesday my god this week has gone so fast but do they do they need the same amount of work probably not but do they still both have those characteristics yes a working dog a working dog that's been bred as a working dog as long as you are out training them so for example uh i'll say like recall with a labrador if you're doing like recalls and retrieves with a labrador it doesn't care whether it's bringing you a dummy or a bird if it's never been out to get a bird it doesn't even know that's even an option quite happy doing memories doing marks doing blinds with a dummy a cock spaniel or a, sp a spring spaniel like my tooth they will as happily hunt for tennis balls as they would for a bird because the thing they're getting from it, this thing that rewards them, the thing that pays them for the job, is doing the thing they love. So I don't think it makes, in my personal opinion, any issue if your dog never actually goes out and works, as long as you're still getting it to enjoy and do the things it was meant to do. Does that make sense? So as long as it's mentally still being very active and enjoying its day and being encouraged to bring its traits into work, I use the word work there again, then, then why does it matter? Because And the reality is, like, and tell me if you agree in the comments, do you think a working dog needs to physically work on game or on a shoot? Because I don't particularly believe it does. If you do end up at that point, that's great. There's many, many women in our group who joined with a pet dog and they just wanted it to sit still at the coffee shop. And then they started doing stuff with us. And they did more gun dog training and more stuff. And then they were like, oh, okay, well, maybe I will do this. And then, you know, you can talk to our experts all the time. They started, like, at a novice level or a foundation level. They get to intermediate and they're like, could my dog and me go out on shoot? Well, yes, you can. And if you suddenly get to that point where your dog is well-trained and well-behaved and you want to go do that, absolutely go do it. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it to death. But if you don't go down that route, it doesn't make your working dog any less of a working dog. Are we all like sort of agreeing on this one? Um, so Lewin said, no, as long as they are physically and mentally satisfied, no problem. Absolutely. It is about their mental stimulation. So all dogs like exercise. But as far as I am concerned, you will not out-exercise a spaniel. I've never seen it. They literally will come in after 11 hours out. They will lay down. And if I go and put my wellies on, they are ready to go again. They might be wrecked, but they're ready to go again. You won't get that level of exhaustion out of them. But they are quite happy when they're out and they're doing things that involves them engaging their brain. They do tire out more. Does that make sense? Um, also, some dogs can't get the training enough to be a full gun dog. Yeah, definitely. We've seen this across the board. There is a massive shortage of physical training spaces for gun dogs. So a lot of our ladies, they come to us, they train with us, they're training online, they come to our weekends, or they do online certification with us, and they do all that stuff in order to, to do what they want to do with their dog, because there isn't somebody locally to them who can give them that type of training. And that's another case where if you haven't got access to all that you might never end up getting to the point of a shoot i totally agree with you um so across our community you will see people who are out a couple of days a week 15 dogs working their backsides off and they are absolutely brilliant and then you will see people who are out doing um like different things like working tests and they've never seen live game or dead game and they are doing just as brilliant and everyone is seen as equally and so they should be like i have got 
um, no judgment for anyone with any breed who's out there doing the do and just enjoying the dog and training the dog. So if you came to us and said to me, oh, I don't know, let's make up a breed. You've got a, a Springer Retriever Poodle, whatever, that they, whatever name has been given to those, right? Can I join? Of course you can, because as long as you're committed to training your dog and enjoying your dog, what does it matter what it is? There are no breed snobs in our group. It's never been allowed. It never will be allowed. You can have an opinion on whether crossbreed should exist or not exist. That's a completely different game. But within our group, everybody who wants to train their dog is welcome to train their dog. Does that make sense? Um, so I don't know if there's any sort of questions around like working dogs, what they need to do, what they don't need to do. We have really good podcasts about this where our experts go in depth on it on Found It Fetched It, okay? So if you're like, oh, actually, I want to like look into this more, go and watch them. There's hundreds, literally hundreds of amazing podcasts you can join in with. But just to, to wrap this up for you all, really, 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 it doesn't matter what your dog is. You can do amazing stuff with them. Enjoy working dog training. Enjoy gun dog training. If, for our American counterparts, I believe it's called hunting dog training or bird dog training. I don't know if it's called something different in Australia um, or New Zealand or some of the other countries that we're in. And if there is, please let me know. But whatever the type of training, anything that you're doing that's encouraging your dog to work with you and, and have a, a bond with you and have obedience it's got to be a good thing and it, we are open to all okay um so uh some says i'll just read the comments on facebook because i don't want to miss anybody i do get saying i feel guilty that i'm letting my dogs down by having them as a pet and not working them amanda no you're not literally i'm guaranteeing a really lovely trainer told me something the other once a couple of years ago now and said if you could ask your dog the question what would they say so if i said to my dogs um are you like really destroyed that we don't go work anymore? Rex would probably say, mm, I used to enjoy it, but we still have loads of fun. Ella would probably say, well, I didn't really like the amount of people being around me. I'm not really that type of dog. So I'd rather be just one to one with you. Like, think about it now. I know without going like mental, think about what your dog would say. Like they would probably say, no, I'm absolutely fine with this. I absolutely love you. Love you. I absolutely love the life we have together. The guilt you're feeling is being put in place by society telling you that and society i'm sorry i'll put my hand up on it and say you can quote me on it society is wrong you, a working dog needs to be working it does not need to be working with live quarry it doesn't it needs to be doing stuff it loves to do and that it was bred to do without doubt does that need to end up with a finding or picking up uh, a game no it doesn't if you want to do it great we love you we you're welcome in our group if you don't great we love you welcome in our group um uh Callan, thank you we need to cheer this day we went to see our trainer today my lab wasn't having a good day i came away thinking why am i bothering as we will never work i know she enjoys it and she's a pain without training Caroline, it never matters if she never steps foot on an estate what matters is you are out there training her that shows your love and commitment to her and her breed characteristics she could not ask for a better owner could she she really couldn't um let me make sure i just have met and um, lost um this thing before i close off the call um uh, when i'm training my dog i feel like i asked him working yes absolutely that is exactly it he literally is working the minute your dog goes out and puts his head down and starts like hunting your dog is working and that could literally be sometimes you all know it you walk outside your door and your dog's like sniffing at the hedgerow your dog's working so the more stuff you do the two um structure that and get that to be something between the two of you the better absolutely better it doesn't need to involve him going out to work somewhere um okay let me just make sure i've covered everybody i don't work my dogs but i love the training although i feel guilty that we don't use them for the job they were bred for please don't feel guilty nobody at all in the whole of the gun dog training community is going to be upset with you out training a working dog people i think get frustrated when working dogs are not given a job and i don't mean a job again in the physical sense of go out and get paid to go pick up game i mean when you see the dogs being um 
treat it as a pet that doesn't need to do anything all day you know they get flustered and they get frustrated and there's a lack of knowledge and and again i don't get upset with that where i see that the person doesn't know what they don't know something i say in the group all the time you don't know what you don't know so if you ended up with a working dog and you have no understanding of its breed characteristics we're here to help you okay nobody is going to judge you as soon as we've got that dog doing something going to get out to get a tennis ball and bring it back to you and working with you that dog is doing what it needs to do and you'll probably see the lot of frustrations that you see as a pet owner disappear like you just said and the person before when you go to training the dog's far more manageable because the dog's going to do what it needs and wants to do and it does need to do it okay um we love the minority breeds yes we do love the minority breeds we love all the breeds um i'm just making sure i missed anything because this is meant to be a really short uh live um, I am going to jump on a live on Sunday night as well, because another thing that sort of came out after we did the web, now we've had loads of feedback from you guys, it's been absolutely brilliant. Some of that feedback has been around, does my working dog like suffer if it's not a working dog? We've all wrapped that up now, no it doesn't, as long as you're out doing something with it, enjoying it, training it, having fun, it's absolutely happy with you, I promise you. Um, on Sunday I'm going to do about uh, remembering what your dog remembering your training when you're training your dog okay so for somebody uh, like myself with the operations i've been through i suffer quite badly with brain fog i started when i was 30 when i had the first operation really really badly and i know a lot of people as we get older we start forgetting like everything so i'm going to cover a little bit about that it's going to be a really short live like this uh, if you were on our webinar absolutely fabulous that's excellent i hope you really enjoyed i hope you really enjoyed this as well let me know if this is the type of stuff you want me to jump on and go through with you guys um the webinar we did is on youtube if you go to the ladies working dog group um ladies working dog group frazzled to focus you will find that one hour training it was only meant to be 30 minutes it was absolutely fabulous super super fun loads and loads of training in it it went on to an hour the people who started with us at the beginning were still there at the end everybody had a, a brilliant time so that's there on youtube for you as well um but yeah if you need us to do more of this if you want to do more of this let me know and we shall do that for you so i'm gonna leave it there now thank you very much for your time thank you on instagram thank you on facebook and um it's just what i needed to hear thank you amanda if i could come and physically hug you i would your dog's absolutely fine fine i promise you i'm gonna end both calls now and uh have a fantastic evening i'll be back on sunday night i think i've put it up for 7 30. so I'll see you all on 7 30. have a lovely weekend just enjoy your dog dog have fun and it doesn't matter if it doesn't go anywhere near game okay speak to you all soon bye now all